Hi guys, it's Ben here. Welcome back to another video. It is a preview for Liverpool versus Brighton and Hove Albion, which takes place this Saturday tea time, live on BT Sport. It's a bit early, it's Wednesday night, but I'm just enthusiastic. I just want to get straight back talking about the Reds again, and I'm sure you guys feel the same. What a result of Man United against Crystal Palace. Um, so yeah, two games, two wins. Six goals scored, none conceded. We have every right to be buzzing at the start of this season. We had a great pre-season campaign. We saw the likes of Shakiri coming in. You know, we got a glance at Cater and Fabinho and the new signings. So we enjoyed that and we brought it into the new campaign and we've got even better. We were great against West Ham without having to really go through the gears. We were good against Crystal Palace, a tough, tough away game Crystal Palace. I said uh, after the game on my vlog, a lot of teams are going to go there and struggle this season. A lot of teams are going to drop points there. Don't be surprised if they give United a tough game. You know, I know that they lost to Brighton, but don't be surprised if they give Chelsea a tough game. Um, you know, City drew there last year. You can see why it's such a difficult place to go. But that's four wins on the bounce for Liverpool at Crystal Palace away in the Premier League. Um, so Jurgen Klopp, I believe, has never lost there. He, he can't have done. So, yeah, I mean, we showed real metal there. The first half... We controlled it, they got back into it, we got the penalty, and then, look, I mean, they put us under pressure second half, but we just looked so composed. Virgil van Dijk and Joe Gomez are forming a formidable partnership at the back. I know it's early days, but I'm excited to see whether Joe Gomez can continue in this vein. I've been doing Instagram Lives lately, and a lot of you have been asking about Dayan Lovren and whether he comes straight back in. For me, we don't change a winning formula at the moment and, and unless we have to, and especially these first four games before the international break. Um, so obviously this one against Brighton, and then Leicester, I think will go very, very similar. Um, well, I mean, the defence just should not change at all. People are talking about Klein coming in for Trent. Um, I thought Trent played well against Crystal Palace. Um, so for me, that's not even an option. Uh, obviously, the centre-backs pick themselves due to the injuries uh, and Matip's inconsistency. Uh, and Robertson is not going to get um, outed at left-back. Um, now, the only selection problems, or not problems, um, decisions to be made this time is in midfield. Now, uh, we went for the same three of Wijnaldum, Milner and Keita against Crystal Palace and I thought they all did very well. The Henderson change was needed. Um, I called it about five minutes before it happened and then it did happen and it did very much help us win the game. I think it might be time to see Jordan Henderson from the start. A lot of you are calling for Fabinho from the start. For me, I'd be very surprised. Um, I think we may see Henderson in and I think we may see Lallana in, you know. I really do think we might see Adam Lallana start this game. Um... I might be completely wrong, I w and I wouldn't be surprised if we're unchanged again. You know, Milner and Van Alden have been playing very well, and it's not a personal thing, it's not a form thing, it's purely just based on the the opposition. Um, you know, Henderson with those kind of with those forward passes that he that he drills into the feet of the attackers, um, I think they'd be very valuable. Him him playing the number six role, and I just want the Lana's creativity in there. I just want to see him have a bit of freedom. Maybe play closer for the number ten role with Cater as your number eight. So, yeah, I'll be very happy to see that midfield three and then obviously the front three. Well, I say obviously, again, on my Instagram Live, make sure you follow me on Ben Might Say to see my Instagram Lives. I'm going live m most days at the moment, um, just to kind of talk with you guys about um, all things Liverpool. And some of you are suggesting that you want to see Daniel Sturridge start up front because Firmino hasn't looked quite all there in the first couple of games. I disagree. I mean, Firmino, of course, hasn't been quite himself. He's been, he's been 7 out of 10 where you expect 9 out of 10. But he's got to play himself into form, you know. I mean, he was still involved in a goal against West Ham. Um, you know, he's still he's still having some nice touches and dropping deep and working hard. It's just not quite happening for him. That that end product isn't quite there. Um, and you know, his touch isn't quite the Firmino ten out of ten touch you expect. And it's the same with Mo Salah. His touch was really poor against Palace. I mean, he stank the place out really. But he won the penalty, got an assist, and uh, got a plus end off. So you know, Salah and Firmino both need to get the momentum together, but once they do, we're going to, you know, hit hit full stride and be an even bigger force to be reckoned with. Um, it's Brighton and Hove Albion at home. Brighton are a good side. I really like Brighton. I like the manager. I like their football. They're a very nice team to watch. It, you know, if, if it's Saturday 12.30 and it's Brighton versus Bournemouth, I'm, 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 just, I'm more than happy to sit and watch that game of football because they play, the, they play nice. They play the right way. They've got nice creativity in there with Pascal Gross. They've got a striker in Glenn Murray who just gets the most out of his ability. I mean, how good was his finish against Man United at the weekend? Um, so yeah, we cannot take these guys lightly. We did beat them 4-0 and 5-1 last season. Um, excuse me there for the email. So excuse, you know, we, we, we can be excused for 
um, complacency. But yeah, obviously something we have to guard against, especially, well, I mean, it's going to be a problem all throughout the season. We're expected to be winning games, um, especially at Anfield, where we didn't lose all of last season in the league. Um, so yeah, we cannot be... Uh, coming into these games with any sense of entitlement, expecting to win. Having said that, I do expect us to win this game comfortably, um, and that's nothing against Brighton, it's just the momentum that we've got, it's just the talent and the performance level, although it's not superb from absolutely everyone yet, it's heading in the right direction, and I feel like, for once, everyone is happy with all of the personnel in this team. There's no... There's no moaning in the comments on my videos, there's no moaning in the crowd, there's no players that are being singled out. Normally there's always one or two. I mean, it's obviously Karius for a long time or Mignolet. Um, Dayan Lovren gets a bit of it. Um, I think people have kind of turned on him in a positive way, but for now, Joe Gomez is in anyway, and he is playing very well alongside Van Dijk. The midfield, we've got options in there. Everyone's loving Naby Keita, and the front three. I mean, Mane had a phase last season when people went off him for a bit. Um, he obviously made mistakes around the Christmas sort of time, but he picked himself back up, and now he's been our best player so far this season. So, yeah, it's hard to look past us for a win. Um, I... You know, I think it could be comfortable. So I had three ten pound, three free ten pound bets on eight 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 Sport, who sponsored a video a couple of weeks ago. Um, not this one, um, but yeah. So I, I, it was an offer where you bet ten and get thirty uh, thirty pound in free bets. So my three ten pound bets were for me to score first because I think he, he's due a goal, and it just seemed like the sort of game he'd get off and running. I went for last goal Shakiri and a home win, um, which was twenty seven to five. So. Um, yeah, Shakiri to come on this game. A lot of you are asking about him on my Instagram lives as well, whether you think he should be starting. No, I think he'll come off the, off the bench when we're sort of 2 or 3 nil up, do some nice stuff, send us all home happy, and I think he might get the last goal. I also went for a Mane anytime and 4 nil win, which is what I'm kind of banking on. I think 4 nil is a fair shout, and Sadio Mane is in great goal-scoring form. His goal at Palace, just great tenacity, great determination, and you know, great pace and a lovely finish. So I've got no negatives. I've honestly got nothing that I can kind of play devil's advocate with and suggest that Brighton might cause us problems. They are a good side. They beat Man United. I like a lot of their players. As I said, their attacking players in particular. They are going to be without Lewis Dunk, who picked up that knock in the first half against United. It didn't deter them in that game. Um, you know, Shane Duffy played well, scored. Um, but yeah. David Proper and Dale Stevens in midfield, are they going to be good enough? Will they, will they load the midfield with one more guy? Will Gross be dropped or will he play a bit deeper? Again, he obviously plays in that 10 as it is. Interesting to see, but these aren't typically one of those teams that just put 11 men behind the ball. Um, I'm not sure what their plans are going to be. We saw City rip apart Huddersfield 6-1 at the weekend. Um, we've kind of got to send out a similar message here, I feel. Um, but the most important thing is the three points. If it's a 1-0 off someone's arse and an own goal in the 95th minute, I don't care as long as we get the win. So that's my thoughts. 4-0 win for me. Mane, Salah, and for me, I'd just score. Mane getting two, I think. Um, and I've gone Shakiri. Mane, Salah, Shakiri for me. Now, there you go. That's the 4-0. Looking at the other fixtures this weekend, Man City are the first team to play. They go to Wolves on Saturday afternoon. I'm going to miss that game because I'll be travelling to Liverpool. Um... So, yeah, that's not an easy game. It's probably slightly easier than Palace away. Um, Wolves haven't quite... They, they didn't impress me against Everton. I know, I know they managed to snatch a draw. Um, they lost at Leicester, so it's not been an easy start for them. I guess they want to, you know, kickstart their season somehow. But, yeah, City coming to them in August is far from ideal. I just think City will, will, will breeze past these. I, I, honestly, I cannot see City dropping a point until... Um, they come to Anfield in October, on October the 7th. Um, I know we've got to go to Spurs and Chelsea in that time, so we might be f between three and six points behind. Hopefully we keep winning as well. But yeah, they go to Wolves. That's the first game of the weekend, so they're setting the pace. Chelsea go to Newcastle. Um, that's actually after we play. They play them on Sunday afternoon. Arsenal home to West Ham. Do we care about Arsenal? Let me know. Uh, United Spurs. That's a big game Monday night. So lots of intriguing games. Um, and we have the easiest one on paper, so we've just got to go there and do our jobs. As I say, leave a comment with your thoughts and any selection headaches. I mean, the midfield three is, I suppose, the biggest talking point. I'm going for Henderson, Lalana, and Keita. What is your midfield three? Are you bringing Daniel Sturridge in? Are you bringing Jordan Shakiri in? Um, that's kind of all. Are you bringing Nathaniel Klein in? I think that's probably all the selection decisions we have to discuss. Your score predictions, your goal scorers, your overall thoughts. 
Um, I've mentioned on Instagram Live earlier that I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm gonna start live streaming on YouTube. If you could leave a comment with what day and what time UK time you'd like me to do it, my suggestion at the moment is Monday 10 p.m. Um, after Monday Night Football. Um, we haven't got any Monday night games in a while, so yeah, it seems like a free night to come on and talk about Liverpool for 45 minutes to an hour. Let me know your thoughts on that. Would you watch it live at the time, 10pm Monday every week? And um, is that the best time? Maybe a Thursday night or a Friday? Um, maybe only two a week if, if it goes well, we never know. Um, but yeah, as always guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you're a watcher, that doesn't subscribe, please do subscribe because the numbers need to go up. We need to be smashing it this season. We've really got to accelerate now. Um, I want to get to 10K by the end of the season. I could have said calendar year then, but that might have been a bit of bit, a bit, a bit unrealistic. We'll see. Anyway, Instagram as well. I've got over 5,000 on there, so more of you are on Instagram than you are on YouTube, which is bizarre. But yeah, Instagram's there. Follow me on there too. And yeah, I'll see you next time.